Welcome to Toll Talks. Today we're going to look at the rigid body component in more detail and have our first introduction to scripting or coding in Unity Game. So that concludes a very cursory look at a view of rigid bodies. Please look through the different functions to see what they can do. Uh, this has been Toll Talks. Until next time. All right, so here we are in a basic, uh, in a basic Unity. I've just created this package, 2D, so go ahead and create your package. Pause the video if you need to. Please keep up with me as we're going through this. I do not want to uh, just run over you guys' information. So once you have the uh, Unity project finished, let's look into what we're doing here. So what, we, what I've done is I've added a cube. And I basically stretched out using the stretch or the um, uh, corner tool, if you will. I've stretched it out a little bit. I can just decrease it a little bit here. And I've also added a rigid body. And this window is not going to get my way. I think this is going to happen. Um, fortunately, I do not have a good spot to put this. I may have to end up losing the webcam. We'll see. Anyway, I've added a rigid body. It's kinematic. It does not use gravity. So it's going to be our platform. It's going to be a thing that the object sits on. And um, it's that's all that's going to be there. So it's just going to be a wall. I then added a, a capsule, capsule, and I called it player. Here, let's disregard this for a moment. So our script we're going to make. Here, I have ha I make a rigid body. It's going to use gravity. And what I've done, if I if you see down here the constraints, I've opened these constraints. I'm going to lock the X, Y, and Z rotation so my capsule can't rotate in any, in any dimension. However, the positions are not frozen, so the, the positions can move wherever they want. So this is the setup. I'm going to call it player. One thing I did not mention in previous lectures, I, may have, um, I haven't done lecture 1.3, so I'll probably mention this 1.3, so it's a little bit out of order. I apologize. But you have to save each individual scene along with the project. The project does not automatically save the scene. So you go to File, you need to go Save Scene, and then a little dialog box is going to pop up and ask where to save it. The correct way to do that is under your Asset folder. Right now you won't have Player, but you'll see that I have Scene. You should make a folder called Scene, and then when you do Save Scene, save it under this folder. It, the scene or the level is actually an asset in your game. So it's very important. I did not mention that in the first two videos I made. The other one, of course, then is to save project. When you save project, that saves all the settings. The worst case scenario you have is you'll save the project, which will save all your information you changed down here, but you won't change the scene, and then all the stuff you've edited or added to the scene will just be gone. So we don't want to do that. Now, now we're going to make a script, a C-sharp script. So we're going to look at so this rigid body uh, and player. Sorry. Oh, I also added a directional light, obviously. Um, we're going to add, look at this player, and we're going to add a new uh, script or a new component. We can do this by doing it this way, add component. Come on now, add component. Um, say script, and we can say, oh, I'm trying to give us an option for a new script. New script. Let's say new script. And we can select C Sharp or JavaScript. Why anyone would program a game in JavaScript is beyond me, so we'll stick with C Sharp. Uh, but we're not going to do it this way, though. We're not going to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to make a player folder. Remember, organization is important. So all of our assets that go to the player are going to be inside, that we make, are going to be inside this folder. So we're going to make a player folder. And then inside the player folder, we're going to have a subfolder called script. And all, and then inside that subfolder, we're going to have, make our first C sharp script. So please pause it and make sure you implement this. Remember, organization is vital for this to work. As soon as these projects scale any sort of size, you're not going to be able to track what assets you have. So once we're here, we're going to right click and we're going to say create C sharp script. And we can name it. I called it My Player Controller. You can call it what you want. And it's going to give you some stuff over here. Don't worry about it. And don't worry about this. You won't have this up here at the moment either. 
I know I'm going to regret this, but I'll try to move that back over there. Once you double click this, if you're using Windows, it should open Visual Studio Community Edition. If you have not used Windows, then you might get Mono Develop or you might get some other IDE that's specified. In fact, I'm not sure if Unity actually IDE runs on Mac. It should. It used to. So this is the basic controller you're going to get. You are not going to have a controller. You're not going to have this information. You're going to have start and update. That's all you're going to have, with obviously without my comments. The first thing you notice is it inherits from mono behavior. Mono behavior is the base class that all game objects are going to use. Uh, we're going to actually extend this once again when we go to network. We'll use network behavior, but that's that's way down the line. So right now we're going to inherit from mono behavior. This script is going to be a component that you add to the game object. So just like a rigid body or a collider, it's going to be something, a property or an element you add to the game object itself. So first thing to realize is you do not get a constructor by default with Unity. And there's several reasons for that. And generally you don't need one. Uh, Unity is going to give you a trigger function called start. And ideally, this function will be called after all the components have been initialized. I have encountered a few weird situations where that's not true. Um, uh, so if you need to have a constructor, you may have one. You can make a constructor. It's not required, and more often than not, you're not going to have one. But I'm just showing you, you can make a classic constructor. And just like Java, this is going to call the parents, the, um, the highest level ancestor, so to speak, down to this constructor. But this is not this is not necessary, so you don't have to do this. And we'll come back to what I'm doing here, but we'll I'll explain this in a very in a really quick. Uh, so start. This is the function that happens when the in, uh, is called after the components created, ideally after all the components are up. We'll, uh, there are some weird cases where that won't happen. Um, update. Update is going to happen at every frame. However, it's not necessarily fixed. So, this is, if any of you use Game Maker, this is similar to Game Maker's update. This would be equivalent. Uh, Unity does a pretty good job of being consistent, but it, this is not a fixed time interval. If you need it to be fixed, you can use uh, fixed update, capital F, capital U. However, however, and for a warning, you want to keep this lean and clean. So complex code needs to go up in the update. Uh, fixed update, you need very sparse and very picky what you put in fixed update. So updates can be called every frame. This is what kind of keeps your, this is what moves your game along. So if you need to change something, you get input, you need to move something or change the direction, it's all going to happen inside update. So let's go back to our whole, the whole point of this lecture is the rigid body. Notice I have a public rigid body a variable here. And there's two reasons I've done that. In Unity, if you make it public, the editor can actually assign values to it. Uh, there's pros and cons to that. You just, you, you'll see as we move on. But in the old school days in Unity 4, I could do something like this. This dot game object. By the way, this dot game object refers to the game object that this script is attached to. So it's very often the case that we will we'll, you'll end up thinking because uh, Unity does a lot of aliasing for you that this is referring to a game object. It's not. It's this dot game object is referring to the game object that the script's attached to. So this dot game object dot uh, rigid body. And it's a dot velocity or something. And in Unity 4 we could do this. So we what Unity would assume is okay, this now this just has to be um, actually, not velocity. It wouldn't be. I'm sorry. It wouldn't be a function. We could do this and print this out or something. Um, velocity. Three. There. Do a statement. So we could normalize. So this was set the new velocity to zero zero zero. 
Uh, normally we could do this in Unity 4. In Unity 5 we cannot do this anymore. Uh, so what was happening in Unity 4, it assumed that this right here, that the, the user was smart enough to just have the rigid body on the object, and then it was going to just find this rigid body and add it for you. They decided that was kind of sloppy and led to some problems. So now we have to manually go search out the rigid body. And so we can't do this in this form anymore. Be careful, there's a lot of tutorials and code online that are that's using Unity 4 and doing that exactly that. So we could simply find the game component the rigid body every time. So this is an example, this.game object rigid body. And every time I want to touch the rigid body, I could do this. However, this is a search, and searching, although fairly optimized, is still slow. So what the recommended practice is you have a public variable of the type you're looking the component you're looking for, in this case, rigid body. So you say, and so my rigid body, my rig, my rig equals this dot game object dot get component and then the rigid body as a template. Like C++. If there's no rigid body attached, this is going to be null. So if you, if you think that there's a situation where there's not going to be a rigid body, check to see if it's null. Once you have this, then you can use the rigid body. So a couple things about uh, rigid body. Rigid body handles all the physics, all the Newtonian physics of the system. Um, they're going to use uh, vectors as their position and their velocity and their angular velocity. Uh, actually, no, they're using quaternion for the angular velocity part. Um, but so if I want to look at my velocity, if I do the total speed, I can do my rig dot velocity dot magnitude. This will be the overall speed I'm going regardless of what direction. Uh, if I want to look at individual components, x, I can do my rig dot velocity dot x, my rig dot velocity dot y, and my rig dot velocity dot z. Uh, debug debug.log is what I like to use for getting that messages out because this will not print on a build version only only when you run it inside the IDE. Uh, but it should, I, you know, good practice, this should not be in a build version. You should just take this out or comment it out. One problem here is that the velocity and position.x.y.z cannot be set individually. So if I want to set say the position, I'm going to do my vector dot x, or I have to make a new vector, so I could do it, this is the hard way of doing it, my vector 3 plus my vector, new vector 3, then I set each individual component, I could also just do, I just do vector 3, and I can send in X, Y, or I can send an X, Y, and Z as a constructor, so this is also a valid way and probably the correct, easier way of doing it, creating a vector. I just wanted to show you that you can set the values on your own vector, just not velocity and position. And then here, I'm going to set my rate.position equals my vector. So this is going to snap it to whatever this location is, which I remember is a little bit a little bit too low, so we'll make this one point. We'll make this two. So just on every update cycle, it's just snap my capsule to that position. So I save that. Now, if you run it right now, nothing's going to happen. Remember, the script is the component of the object. So here's our game object. We need to go down here. Yeah, I know going to regret that. And we either go add component scripts, and here's our player controller, or we can go to our um, our asset folder and our project view and drag it onto the object and add it as a component. The other way we can set my rigid body, if you know it's down here, I can actually go take this rigid body, click on it, and drag it into the box. But I, that can be useful for simple fast prototyping. Uh, it can be very difficult when you're trying to spawn or create objects in games. So you can't always do this drag and drop. Plus, it can become kind of tedious. So this is not always a good good method of doing it. I would recommend doing it by code. So now if we run this, we will see that our, our capsule keeps popping back to location, but physics is trying to take over. So we keep 
pushing it back to a certain location. Remember, it does have gravity. So that's not very exciting. Well, it's exciting, but not really what we want. So here, I can also set the vector, sorry, of the velocity. So now I can do velocity. And this will give it a 1 over, sorry, 1 over 2 up uh, velocity. And gravity, oh, I can't run it here, sorry. You cannot run it from the uh, Visual Studio. You have to run it from Unity. So I run this, and now we should see our capsule moving up, which we do. And again, the, uh, gravity is in effect, so it is changing. If I look at my console, you'll see that the overall velocity is changing. But what's happening is every update cycle, I'm refreshing it. So, what would happen if I didn't update it every, recycle, every cycle? <clears throat> so, we're not going to do this anymore. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we'll say my rig.velocity equals new vector 3. Um, we'll say, what's it? 1 over and 2 up and 0. So, and we're only going to do this once. So, once the game's created, immediately it's going to have a velocity to move it up, and then we're going to see uh, what will happen. So, save this, we'll run this. So, now it gave it a little bit of velocity, but then gravity took over, so it kind of just flopped. Let's, that wasn't very exciting. Let's make this a little more exciting. Let's say. Uh, also, let's make this 2, and we'll make this 20, so it'll last a little bit longer in here. Oh wow, way too much. <laughs> so it should come down, oh, you saw it, it came down over there, so that was too much. Anyway, you get the idea, we can kind of, you know, play with this and find a nice half medium, hopefully 5 will do it. And then we can now control when or how our objects have velocity. The next video, I'm going to use the same example. See, there it goes. There was a nice little hop. I'm going to use the same video, but we're going to show you inputs and how to get inputs, simple inputs, and command the rigid body.